To those who don't know me, my name is Chris Corsini, but you can call me Chris. I am a film production student at the Isle of Wight College, and it's currently the beginning of 2021. My current assignment for the Isle of Wight College is my final major project, which is woo, it's exciting. I get to do whatever I want. Uh, unfortunately, recently, I've drawn a blank. I don't know what to do. I wanted to make a, a sitcom, but then I realised that's a lot of effort, given the situation that we're in at the moment. So I had to pass that up. But then I thought, why am I feeling this way? And that's what I want to look into. Because I'm very much a film person. You can take a look around my room. Uh, I love films. But even then, recently I've gone off films as well. I don't hate films by any means, but I've definitely noticed that I watch a lot less than I used to. And I've started to slowly realise that I'm getting very drained and distracted from everything really. And I know that I'm not the only person that feels this way. I am really hoping this looks okay. Okay, let me bring it up to speed. It's currently March in the year 2021, and all the way back on the 31st of December 2019, right on New Year's, uh, a virus started to spread in China. This virus was reported to cause respiratory symptoms, uh, fever and fatigue, and could be noticed uh, by a distinct cough. Of course, this virus would uh, later go on to be uh, COVID-19, which is the virus that we know today. COVID-19, it's a coronavirus, and a coronavirus is nothing new. Uh, coronaviruses have been around for a very long time. The most common type of coronavirus being uh, the common cold. Uh, they all cause mild fever-like symptoms and cold like symptoms, but COVID-19 was a little different. At the time of writing this, uh, 116 million people have caught coronavirus. That's on record, you know, off record. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, two and a half million people have died. However, on a more positive note, uh, 65 million people have recovered and currently, at the moment, there's um, vaccines going out which are showing to be 80% uh, effective, which is great. It's good news, it's a step in the right direction. Whenever you go to the shops or out in public, you have to wear a face mask. In the UK, currently, we're coming out of our third national lockdown and slowly we're returning back to normal. Uh, and it's predicted that by mid-May, things will start to even out a bit. I spent all of my lockdown with my mum and my sister and occasionally my dad but the problem with my dad is he's a bus engineer up in London and of course there's a higher infection rate up in London than there is on the Isle of Wight so I was always worried he would bring it back to the house unknowingly. Hello. Hi. My name's Becky Corsini. I have Christopher Corsini, who's 21, and Bella Corsini, who's just turned 19. I'm a housekeeper slash caretaker who um, cleans people's houses and also work for a holiday cottage company as well. So I'm just awaiting the um, arrival of the guests, hopefully in May. Spot. I'm John Corsini and I'm a bus engineer for London United. I'm, I'm a response bus engineer which goes out on breakdowns in central London. Been here since 2007 which makes it 14 years. We moved to the island because we wanted a, a quieter and better life for our children to grow up as children. <laughs> What do you mean, what do I do? Who are you? Bella. 
So I'm looking at you with the camera. Bella Corsini. I've got to twitch my eyebrow. Bella Corsini, your sister. Well, your sister. Sister, I'm your sister. <laughs> You're my brother. <laughs> I'm a cleaner. And I like cars. Uh, have you picked up any new hobbies? Drifting. Don't tell mum. <laughs> bing bing skid skid. <laughs> bing 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 ma 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 ma. During lockdown, the only time you meant to leave your house was either to go to the hospital or to get some bog roll. The queues outside Morrison's and the co-op and other big stores like that were so, so long. And when you got in the shop, there was nothing there. So, seeing as how everyone had to stay indoors, I decided to catch up on some films, TV shows and games. What do you do to keep yourself entertained in lockdown? Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's it. Good old Apple iPhone. But I like taking up quite a bit of reading actually. I've got through quite a few books. I've watched Prisoners again, about twice. And I like Prisoners. I've just trawled Netflix. Some I've reread, because the second time round they're always better. In the first lockdown, I watched over 100 films. Don't know if I'm really proud or disgusted. Lockdown gave us a lot of time to reflect, didn't it? I'm sure uh, you went back and, I don't know, maybe listened to some old songs you haven't heard in a while, or watched some shows you haven't seen in a while, read some books. I've read some really good books. I've listened to a lot of really good albums, and I've watched a lot of good films. But as time has gone on, the days got longer and longer, and th that fun started to wear off. I think most people can agree that lockdown became quite challenging towards the end, but I didn't have any solid evidence of this, so I went out and I got some myself. I sent out a survey. I had over 80 responses to this survey, which is surprising because uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can name 80 people. But thank you to everyone who, uh, who took part. The first few questions were simple things. Uh, have you seen any new films? Have you seen any new shows? Uh, have you exercised? Because I know I haven't. I tried. Uh, an overwhelming majority of people said that yes, they have watched more films in lockdown. Where it starts to get interesting is where we look into have you exercised more since the beginning of lockdown? 44.3% of people said they have started exercising more, where 295 said that they haven't. And of course you got some people in the middle. So what do I take from that? Well, I see that as people who started and then broke through and then there's some people who didn't try at all and then there, of course there are some people that are sort of just like yeah i tried but you know i didn't keep it up and it's a clear divide you know like sure there's a there's a lot more people saying that they are exercising which is good it's good to be healthy but you know it is interesting to know that a lot of people said no like it's not a small amount In my survey, I asked several other questions. However, this was the key question I wanted to look at. Since lockdown has begun, how do you feel your mental well-being has been affected? I know that I've been struggling and so have my friends and family. An overwhelming amount of people openly spoke about their struggles with mental health. I picked a few examples that highlight what most people were thinking. One person said that their mental health has noticeably deteriorated more in this latest lockdown teary for no reason and lacking motivation to do anything. In the early stages, when it was new and everyone was putting effort in, it was quite fun. But as time has gotten on, it's gotten harder to keep that effort and mood high. It's getting worse. Being stuck at home in the same environment with no way to escape for an evening, even to work, is really tough. But some people are still keeping somewhat positive. Someone said, it's been a corona coaster of emotions. Do you think you've coped well with lockdown? No. <sighs> yeah. Up to a point. Up to a point. Crap. But then, sort of when the restrictions lifted, not as bad. Up until Christmas, I coped quite well. I mean, it's starting now to get a little bit on top of me. When you get the, the government saying one thing and then it doesn't really happen or they say, oh, we're going to, but 
it might, it's a guideline, it's the, it does dig into you. It does just make you think, when's it all gonna end? I've had a few little hiccups along the way. I think where other family members have been locked down, I've come back very stressed, very tired because of the working conditions and the hours working, so I've been a lot shorter fused. It's just monotonous, isn't it? It's like wading through quicksand. As fast as you get over one thing, you've got another one coming around the corner. It just needs to be irreversible this time, because I just don't think people are gonna just do it this time around. It's a nightmare. If I'm honest, I was initially quite skeptical about COVID-19. I remember seeing it on the news at New Year's and thinking, eh, it's one of those swine flu type things, you know, one of those mad cow diseases that's gonna go away soon. But uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I learned the hard way. So, as I mentioned earlier, my uh, dad works up in London as a bus engineer, central London. So high infection rates. He went a whole nine months completely safe. He was wearing full rebreathers, completely kitted up, did not want to get it at all because of where his mum and dad are both quite ill uh, and he didn't want to risk giving it to them in any way at all. So uh, after, after nine months of pretty much working flat out, doing crazy hours, he was finally relieved to hear that he could go home and spend New Year's with his family. Uh, unfortunately, on <laughs> what was probably his last day of work, he caught COVID-19, brought it all the way back to the island and ended up giving it to the whole household, except Bella. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've had coronavirus and um, I believe I've had it twice. Yes, I contracted coronavirus. I tested positive on the 2nd of January and started to show my first signs on the 30th. Back in April, when there wasn't testing, I got very ill for about five days, um, like nothing I'd have ever had before. I had to ask my neighbour to get me something from the chemist because the paracetamols that were suggested over the telephone weren't working. It wasn't good. It started with a little cough. That started late on the 30th, around about 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. Just felt awful because at the time, all they talked about were people dying. So, of course, there was nothing really to look forward to. There was a few phone calls. People were phoning me saying, how are you? But it's just not the same. And by the time I got off the ferry, it was a bit more of a cough. I just didn't feel right. And then, of course... Um, we got it over the Christ well, New Year, wasn't it? 30th December. I got told that somebody tested positive at work, got a phone call. On the 31st, I got tested on the 1st and tested positive, got the result on the 2nd and then I just went downhill. Felt very, very, very isolated. Worst aspect of coronavirus. Lethargic. No energy, uh, just didn't want to get up and make anything to eat. Not being able to breathe and knowing that you're getting worse and worse. So weak, helpless. 10 weeks, 11 weeks since testing positive. I have no energy. I get out of breath. I have no drive in me because of the lack of energy. I'm fatigued. And I just don't feel right. I just don't feel that I'm in the right. My body's not right. I'm not where I was. So I ended up getting coronavirus on what was probably New Year's. Maybe a day after I really started to feel it. Um, the physical aspect was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, but the mental aspect was a lot more than people uh, give it credit for. I was here 
I, I barely moved from here. I went downstairs and I was out of breath and coughing my lungs up and I had no energy at all. I lost my appetite, which is strange for me. I couldn't watch many films. I couldn't play many games. I couldn't focus on anything at all. I spent most of 2020 uh, either staying at home or working. I work at a small cafe not too far from me, which is nice. I've been there for over four years. I love every single person there. It's just like a second family to me there. So when we reopened, it was tough adapting to the new regulations. We had to wear a mask. Quite a lot of the customers were on edge, which I understand. I understand people were on edge. It was a stressful time for everyone. So I worked for most of Christmas. And then, of course, we caught coronavirus. And we're all pretty down because winter is already a pretty gloomy time of year. So we're all feeling pretty down in the house. So it was on the 10th of January that I received a present from someone. And that present really made everyone feel a whole lot better. What I can see right now are teal squares where my eyes are trying to deal with two lots of bright exposure. My name is Amy Asmagabale. I am a chef at the Piano Cafe in Freshwater Bay on the Isle of Wight. Has COVID-19 affected my work? Absolutely. I didn't expect it to sort of pan out this way. I thought that we'd be able to adapt like quickly and go into like, I don't know, takeaways or another outlet of like service or something that made sense. But instead, because of the, the furlough scheme and etc., it was honestly just the easiest and like most weird transition from going into go, going into work and then going nowhere. Like you're just at home all, all the time. So I guess. Yeah, I think that was the biggest like effect from going from a zero to a hundred back to zero again. I hadn't heard from you for like maybe, I want to say best part of like probably a month at this point. Like, you know, we might have sent each other the occasional, you know, meme or something just as a little like, oh, you know, I'm still thinking about you. And then it came out that you, you were ill and your family were ill and that you were quarantining and you couldn't go anywhere and obviously life had been really restricted for you. So you, obviously, as a friend, as well as a colleague, my heart really did go out for you and your family. So I wanted to do something that, I don't know, I just, it, didn't, it didn't feel right not doing anything about it. Just saying, oh, I'm really sorry, mate. I'm sorry that's happening to you. Just didn't seem enough. You literally only live up the road from me. So yeah, I jumped in my car. I went to the co-op and I just bought a shitload of things that would only benefit your your illness basically, just fruit, vegetables, supplements, juices, honey. It was organic honey as well. Oh yeah, I did buy you peanut butter, didn't I? I remember it was just like a lot of fish. I didn't buy you fish, but I know that... Appreciate it. <laughs> Lemons, that sort of stuff. Just to put in like a big hamper, just say, look, mate, if this is something, just to get you by and make it like that tiny bit less shit. I just didn't feel right not doing anything because I don't think just having a bit of empathy over a, a message really did anything for me. But yeah, no, I did feel really fucking sorry for you and your family. I didn't, I didn't do it out of like a oh, I wanted some sort of like um praise or anything. I didn't want any sort of recognition for it. It just didn't, it just didn't feel right not doing anything. And obviously we work together, we're also mates. It just, do you know what I mean? You would do that for someone, wouldn't you? Amy's a great mate and she might not have realised this, but that little hamper that she put together for me meant a lot more than what she probably thought it did. It was great, she gave me some peanut butter. I put a picture up or whatever one it was. It was really nice. A bunch of bananas, some mangoes, and some innocent fruit smoothies because I couldn't really eat anything because uh, it hurt the back of my throat, but if I drank it, it was all right. Remember, we've felt isolated. We, we are in our homes and that has been our world. So to have someone reach out and give me something physical that will help me through a tough time in my life, it really goes a long way. It meant a lot. And it reminded me, not only is she a great mate and that I owe her big time, but that there's a, there's a whole world of people out there struggling at the moment. I think more people do need to realise that everyone is struggling at the moment. And that's more important than anything else that's going on in the world at the moment. Yes, we need to get the 
uh, infection rates down, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to people. We need to support each other. We really do. Things I'm looking forward to doing again. Not wearing a mask, because it's my little makeup. Yes, getting rid of the masks, even though the masks never bothered me anyway. Um, I'd like to be out of walking to a shop without thinking about wearing a mask. Oh, and not wearing a mask, that'd be nice. But I can't see that anytime soon. Do you know what it is? It's not the fact that I don't like masks, and I never remember them. I never, I remember, never remember to carry one unless I physically have to remind myself or I get to the shop and I'm like, shit. I'll go back to the car and find like a scrunched up dirty one in my glove compartment from my emergencies when I would forget one. So thank you, past future me. Um, I'm a hunch chicken. I'd like to hug me mum and dad. Going on holiday, it's got to be the top one. Going away to Greece again. Socialising is something that I really did miss a lot. And just getting rid of the, the stressness and being a little bit freer in the household. And shaking hands with people, that kind of thing, you know. Touching someone's elbow, it's, I don't know, it just looks weird. It's not, not, not the way you've been brought up, is it? Not to shake someone's hand when you meet them. Everyone's missing their friends and family. I can't wait to see my friends again without having to wear a mask over my face or worry that I'm gonna get fined or catch the virus again. But until then, let's try and stay positive because it's very easy to be negative at the moment. Let's stay positive. Reach out to some friends that you haven't messaged in a while. Talk to some family you haven't spoke to in a while. Reach out and connect with people because we're all struggling and we can all make each other's worlds a little better. Whoever thought it would be a good idea to eat a bat? <laughs>